Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS Friday Night Week 10 College Football. Not the most exciting games on the board, but we do have three games to go through. Uh, let's do it. Welcome to the SWAS. Get the source. First up, we got Georgia State on the road up in Yukon. Huskies laying seven and a half points here at home. Yukon laying more than a touchdown. You'll love to see it. Uh, total sitting at 48 and a half. There are a couple 48s out there. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to the data, action's coming in pretty heavily on the Connecticut side. 95% of the tickets, 95% of the money. As I always say, take it with a grain of salt. Although I do get it. UConn has looked strong recently. So let's get into this matchup and we'll start with the Georgia State offense. Uh, this is an offense that wants to throw the ball. They're 16th in pass frequency so far this year. We recently saw a quarterback change here at Georgia State. We'll talk about it in a second. On the season, Georgia State's offense has been, I mean, okay. I don't know how high the expectations were. This is an entirely new coaching staff here at Georgia State. They also lost a lot of their production from last year, brought in a lot of pieces through the transfer portal. So this is kind of a rebuild year for Georgia State. I suppose they're not terrible. I mean, they're 61st in yards per play, 83rd in success rate. This is a team that wants to throw the ball, just 95th in yards per pass attempt, 83rd in success rate per drop back. It hasn't been all bad, um, but as a whole, this has not been the best year for Georgia State. But on the other side of this graphic, this is where, where, where is this UConn defense coming from? The Connecticut Huskies are 15th in the country in yards per play allowed, 22nd in success rate against the run, 36 in yards per carry, 49th in success rate against the pass, 13th and 6th. Now it's UConn. They don't play the strongest schedule, but even the schedule adjusted metrics look pretty cool here for UConn. 59th in effective rush, 53rd in effective pass, 53rd in DFEI. This UConn defense has been a problem recently, but let's start with the quarterback change for Georgia State. Uh, it looks like Zach Gibson is going to be the guy. It was Christian Valer for most of this season. He got hurt early in the Marshall game. Zach Gibson took over, played pretty well, and then Zach Gibson played most of the next game. So I, I think Zach Gibson is now the starter. He got the start at, against App State. So I think this is the starter moving forward. If you have information that says otherwise, please share it. But I think as far as what I can tell, it looks like Zach Gibson is the starting quarterback for Georgia State now. And I mean, I do get it. In the two games where Zach Gibson was at quarterback, the offense looked a lot more fluent. Wasn't really happening through the air. It mostly happened on the ground. Uh, but in the last two games, just 23 points per game, but success rate up at 48.4%, 6.35 yards per play. Much better than the previous three games with Valera at quarterback. 23.7 points per game is about the same, but 36.1% success rate, 5.4% yards per play so Valer gets hurt Zach Gibson takes over and the offense looks better but not really through the air like I said in the last two games when Gibson was playing quarterback it's the run game that got going for Georgia State in those two games 206 rushing yards per game 53.9 percent success rate per rush 5.89 yards per carry so for whatever reason the run game looks significantly better with Gibson at quarterback compare those to the numbers from the previous three games with Valera quarterback not even in the same conversation just 3.16 yards per carry 31.9 percent success rate per rush so no question run game seems to have found some life with Gibson at quarterback that being said this UConn defense out of nowhere looks elite in their last four games, they're allowing 14 points per game, 33.6% success rate, just 3.79 yards per play. Yes, I'm aware one of those games was against Rice, another one against Temple. They also played Wake Forest. Buffalo, I mean, Buffalo's pretty bad this year, but they played Wake Forest in there, and they played Wake down to the last second. They lost that game 23-20. UConn had the ball at midfield with a minute 15 left or something like that. So UConn could have beaten Wake Forest just a couple weeks ago. This UConn defense is looking official. And you know what? I need to go back in the comments from before the season and apologize to somebody because in our pregame shows, I said this UConn team wasn't going to be any good. And a UConn fan commented all pissed off telling me how good the UConn defense was going to be. And I kind of just dismissed them because, I mean, every single person thinks their favorite football team is going to be awesome this year. That's what they all say. But, I mean, whoever you are, I forget your name, you were right. UConn defense looks official. Playing teams like Wake Forest stuff. So although Georgia State has a newly found rushing attack, I'm not sure Gibson gives them the flexibility in terms of throwing the ball that Valer gave them. 
This UConn defense, especially at home, has been official. I think it's going to be a struggle for the Georgia State offense. But what about on the other side? What about the UConn offense against the Georgia State defense? This is obviously the weakness of the UConn team. The offense hasn't been nearly as good as the defense, but they're up against Georgia State. They can't stop anybody. Georgia State, 108th in the country in yards per play, 115th in success rate. They can't stop the run, can't stop the pass. UConn's offensive numbers obviously don't look great. A little skewed because they've played four of their eight games without their starting quarterback, Nick Evers. He missed weeks one and two, then came back and then missed two more games. Um, but on the season, UConn's 83rd in yards per play, 100th in success rate, better numbers than passing numbers. But as a whole, this, this UConn offense isn't very good. As good as the UConn defense has been, unfortunately, the offense just isn't carrying their weight. In their last three games, just 22 points per game, 32.6% success rate is really bad, 4.61 yards per play. Against Wake Forest, okay, that's acceptable. Temple and Rice at home, you should be able to move the ball at home against Temple and Rice. That being said, it hasn't been great, but the offense does look significantly better in the games Nick Evers played uh, plays in. In the four games Nick Evers has been on the field, they're averaging 26.5 points per game, 37.6% success rate. I mean, still not good, but it's better than the games where he didn't play. 5.24 yards per play. So the fact that Evers is healthy, maybe that gives UConn's offense a little bit, bit more of a spark here. And they are up against Georgia State, who, like I said, can't stop anybody. In their last four games, they're allowing 31.8 points per game, 6.6 .6 yards per play, 48.1% success rate. So maybe with Evers on the field, UConn's able to move the ball at home against a bad Georgia State defense. Personally, I don't believe in the UConn offense much, but the defense has made me a believer. So where does that leave us in terms of placing a bet? Unfortunately, I can't lay more than a touchdown with a team I don't trust to score points, but I do trust that UConn defense. So how about an under here? 48 and a half, especially if Gibson's going to be in at quarterback for Georgia State, more running the ball, more clock running. Maybe they're able to move the chains a little bit, keep the clock rolling. Uh, this should be an under game. I don't trust the UConn offense. Admittedly, I haven't watched a ton of UConn football this year, so uh, make your own decision. But I think I'm going to make a play on the under here, 48 and a half next game. South Florida is on the road at FAU here. FAU catching two and a half points at home. Total sitting at 47 and a half. Take a look at the pie charts, and according to the data, action's coming in pretty heavily on the USF side. 75% of the tickets, over 80% of the money. Take it with a grain of salt, though. So let's get into this matchup, and we'll start with the wildly disappointing South Florida offense this year. This was supposed to be a pretty high-powered unit this season, and they've fallen way short of the mark. 122nd in yards per play, 122nd in success rate. Passing numbers are terrible. 125th in yards per pass attempt, 117th in success rate per drop back. Rushing numbers, not very good either. 83rd, 117th. Now, Byron Brown getting hurt certainly doesn't help the case here. But the truth is, this South Florida offense was pretty disappointing before he got hurt as well. And now I'm reading Byron Brown may be healthy and just not getting his job back. So, I don't know what's going on here with the South Florida offense. All I can tell you is it's been definitely disappointing. They're on the road against an FAU defense that's sitting at 86th in DFEI, 97th in yards per play, 65th in success rate, struggling to stop the run, but it's really, those numbers are skewed. They got run all over by Army and UConn. Other than that, they're not that bad against the run. Numbers against the pass are okay. 67th in yards per pass attempt, 37th in success rate per drop back. So will South Florida be able to move the ball in this one? And personally, I think no. It looks like Bryce Archie is going to get his third start on the season. His numbers don't look great, although he was better in his second start than he was in his first one. Still, I mean, 533 yards passing, 5.3 yards per pass attempt, three touchdowns, four interceptions, and he's a pocket passer. Remember, Byron Brown, his biggest strength is his athleticism his ability to escape from the pocket. Archie doesn't have that. Maybe he's a better thrower of the football than Byron Brown, but I mean, look at the passing numbers in the two games he started. 217 and a half passing yards per game, 34.3% success rate per drop back, six yards per pass attempt. So the passing numbers haven't been good in the two games Bryce Archie started. And on top of that, the rushing numbers are way down for USF. In the two games that Archie started, just 89 rushing yards per game, 30% success rate per rush, averaging under three yards per carry as a team. So losing Byron Brown's escapability seems to be hurting this offense as well, as well as losing him at the, at the quarterback position. So as a whole right now, I don't have a ton of faith in this South Florida offense if Bryce Archie's gonna be a quarterback. Now, the good news for South Florida is they're matched up against an FAU defense that's pretty much struggled for most of the season. 
season. In their last two games, they played two offenses that came out looking to throw the ball, and they held their own. I know you might be looking at this graphic saying 338 passing yards per game. Well, actually, Chandler Rogers and Owen McGowan both dropped back to pass 45 times each in those two games. So just 7.55 yards per pass attempt, 38.7% success rate per drop back. That's not bad. They actually held their own against these two passing offenses here. The weakness of this FAU defense has actually been stopping the run. Like I said, UConn and Army both had over 400 rushing yards against FAU in their last four games, almost five yards per carry, over 200 rushing yards per game, 47.2% success rate per rush. But the thing is, without Byron Brown out there for South Florida, missing Byron Brown's athleticism from the rushing attack, I don't even know if I trust South Florida to run the ball either. So although FAU's defense hasn't been that great this year, I don't hate the matchup for him. I actually think we're going to see a good defensive effort here from FAU. But then we flip it over to the other side and look at the FAU offense. And man, it's been a struggle for Cam Fancher this year, who transferred in from Marshall. He was with Marshall last year. Uh, FAU offensively, 105th in yards per play, 103rd in success rate. Rushing numbers, 79th, 103rd. Passing numbers, 101st, 92nd. Nothing really jumps out at you here. South Florida's defense has actually been okay. I mean, this is an offensive program. They're not expected to have a good defense, but they've been all right this year. 96 in DFEI, 70th in yards per carry allowed, 14th in success rate per run is certainly good. 83rd in effective rush, struggling a bit to stop the pass, which brings us to the main question here. Do you trust Cam Fancher or not? Based on what we've seen this year, you'd have to lean towards not. I mean, 1,155 passing yards, just seven yards per attempt, five touchdowns, six interceptions, a DQB rating, a D big time throw rate, certainly been a struggle this season for cam fancher that being said the home away splits for fau's offense are actually kind of crazy in their four home games they're averaging 30.8 points per game 46.6 percent .6 success rate 6.33 yards per play they've actually played really well offensively in their home games compare those numbers to these their offensive numbers from their three road games just 16 points per game 26.8 percent 4.17 yards per play so we're talking about a night and day difference here FAU's offense on the road versus at home. So the fact that this game's at home, South Florida struggles against the pass, maybe this is a spot to buy low on Cam Fancher. Definitely not a great look for FAU that South Florida's coming off back-to-back -back good defensive games. In their last two against Memphis and UAB, they're allowing just 23 points per game, 35.8% success rate, 5.19 yards per play. So they look pretty solid defensively in their last two games. That being said, there's a clear weakness here with South Florida. They cannot stop the pass. In their last five games, they're allowing over 344 passing yards per game, 48.5% success rate per drop back, over 10 yards per attempt. And yeah, Miami's in there, Tulane, a couple of offenses that are out of South Florida's league defensively, but Southern Miss, Memphis is terrible this year, UAB, there's some bad offenses too. So the fact that this game's at FAU, Cam Fancher's been looking for an opportunity to have a big game here. I don't know. I'm not going to say Cam Fancher is going to throw the ball and have a big game offensively, but if there was a spot for it, it's here. So in terms of placing a bet, I know the whole world's going to be on the South Florida side. I don't like that offense without Byron Brown. I don't trust the run game or the pass game. FAU defensively, I think is going to hold up. And I think Cam Fancher is able to make a play or two to win this one. So catching points at home, give me FAU plus two and a half next game. Last up, we got San Diego State on the road at Boise. Boise State laying 23 and a half points at home. Total sitting up at 57. I do see a couple of 57 and a halves. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to the data, over 70% of the tickets coming in on San Diego State, over 55% of the money coming in on Boise. As I always say, take this with a grain of salt. So let's get into this matchup. And I mean, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. Obviously, there's a mismatch here. Boise State's laying 23 and a half points for a reason. Uh, San Diego State's been pretty terrible offensively, although it does seem... Like they're getting it together a bit in terms of throwing the ball. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but as a whole, it's been a rough year for Sean Lewis in his first year as head coach out here. 105th in yards per play, 121st in yards per carry. There's been no run game whatsoever. The passing attack does seem to be coming around a bit. And that does play into the weakness of Boise State's defense. So that's something. On the season, San Diego State 69th in yards per pass attempt. 102nd in success rate per drop back. 105th in effective pass. So maybe... O'Neal is able to make some throws on this Boise State defense. I don't think that's crazy, um, but obviously on the other side, this is a problem. 
Boise State's going to hand the ball off to Genty a million times, and is there anything San Diego State can do defensively to stop it? They're 70th in yards per carry allowed, 104th in success rate per rush. This has not been a great run defense this year. Going on the road to Boise State and trying to stop arguably the best offensive player in college football, that's going to be a chore for San Diego State. Now, if you are looking to take the points here, you can point at the fact that San Diego State has done a better job defending the run as of late. In their last four games, they're actually allowing just 3.62 yards per carry, 42% success rate per rush. So they do seem to be improving in that department. So that's a good sign. Yes, I know Hawaii's in there. They don't run the ball. Wyoming's pretty terrible. But Washington State, that's a respectable run game to stop. Central Michigan can run the ball a little bit. Look at the numbers last week against Washington State. Just 118 yards on the ground, 3.03 yards per carry, 36% success rate per rush. So this San Diego State defense played great against Washington State last week. And you know what? We do have to point out, and I was talking about this last week when I took the under in the Boise State UNLV game, we do have to point out that the Boise State rushing attack with Genty does seem to be slowing down. Through their first four games, they were averaging over 302 rushing yards per game, over 8.5 yards per carry, 54.9% success rate per rush. Video game numbers here. But in their last three games, we are seeing it come down to earth a bit. They're still averaging 6.13 yards per carry, which is excellent. Just 40.4% success rate per rush, though. Yards per game down to 241. So, I mean, this is still an excellent rushing attack, but the video game numbers that they put up early in the season may have people overvaluing it a bit. We did see UNLV make some stops against them uh, in their last game. So this Boise State rushing attack, probably not as dangerous as everyone thinks, but no question, this is a problem. So is San Diego State able to make stops against Boise here? On the road, <laughs> probably not. They've been playing better defense against the run, but this is tough. Maybe Boise doesn't absolutely smoke them, um, but as a whole, it's going to be a struggle on the road here for the Aztecs. But on the other side of the ball, I do think it's worth a look. So Danny O'Neill, his numbers on the year don't look bad, by the way. 1,240 yards passing, 7.1 yards per pass attempt, six touchdowns, two interceptions, A-plus turnover-worthy play rate, so he protects the football. But specifically, the last four games, it seems like Danny O'Neill is coming around in their last Last four games, they're averaging 252 passing yards per game, 44.3% success rate per dropback, 8.45 yards per attempt. So although Sean Lewis has had all types of problems trying to get this offense going this year, it does seem like the passing attack is coming to fruition a bit. I mean, these are solid looking passing numbers in their last four games. Granted, I mean, these are some bad defenses, but you know what? Boise State does not have a great pass defense. In their last four games, they're allowing over 285 passing yards per game, 8.28 yards per attempt, 40.2% success rate per drop back. Boise State's strong against the run. They're not that great defending the pass. So maybe Danny O'Neill coming in hot. Maybe he's able to make some throws on this Boise State secondary. Keep in mind, Boise State is coming off the biggest game of the season against UNLV. If there was ever a letdown spot on the schedule for Boise State, it would be this one. So the only way I would lean here is taking the points, but... I mean, San Diego, San Diego State hasn't been great this year. And uh, give me San Diego State plus 23 and a half. Do I actually bet this? Probably not. If you'd like to see all the bets I have open for this weekend, head over to kylecrums.com and click on open bets. You can see all mine as well as everyone else on the staff here. Live show, 4 p.m. Eastern time. We'll go through these three games. We'll go through the NBA slate, bring on some guests, same as I always do. Uh, if you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Let's have ourselves a great Friday night here. Let's enter the weekend with some momentum. Please remember to bet responsibly. Talk to you later.